Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode four of Robo Weekly. I'd like to welcome my co-host, Dan. Dan, how are Hi. you doing today? Pretty good. good. Ready to rock good. and roll. Okay, episode four. What does the number four mean to you? Uh, it's the only number that uh, two time, that uh, x times <laughs> x equals x to the power of x. Okay. I think, well. I think maybe zero is also that way. Okay, well, I was going to say two squares. Only non-zero <laughs> number. Okay, good. Um, today, I'm slightly upset. Uh, I know I don't look slightly upset, but the reason I'm slightly upset is that I can't buy a robot. Um, mm. Here at Bay's Edge, where we work, we are a software company, and we wanted to write some great software for robots. And for reasons which I will describe in a minute, we have been unable to do that. So what we actually had to do was build a robot. Um, we've ended up... Uh, uh, unintentionally in the hardware business. Uh, and so next week, we will be announcing our robot, Tycho Bot 1.0. For those of you who are scientifically illiterate, Tycho is named after Tycho Brahe, the astronomer who actually taught Kepler. With an so H. now, I'm sorry? With an H, T-Y-C-H-O. That's right, not the toy company. Very Must be very clear about that. Tycho Bot. So, um, Let's talk about why I couldn't buy a robot. The first one we're going to look at. Let's take a look at the first one I tried to buy. Oh, okay. the figure, yeah. Yeah, this is from Figure. This is the Figure 1. Right. Uh, no price whatsoever. And all I could do was get on a spam list. And right. there is the spam list. So don't, don't you want to be on a spam list? Don't you want to? Uh, no, I am on the spam. I, I am on the spam list, and yeah. I got a thank you for being on the list. Anyway, do you have any comments about uh, the figure one while we're while we're here? Well, they just made an announcement that they were moving away from their relationship with OpenAI and um, had developed uh, their own what what they call a vision language action model, which is the sort of state of the art for manipulation tasks. Uh, so they're a prominent player. They're, uh, I don't believe they're open source like physical intelligence. So there's going to be a kind of a llama versus GPT sort of, you know, interaction going forward in this in this sector, I think. Interesting. Interesting. And of course, uh, open source, which, which, which physical says it is embracing is something that we're embracing, too. Um, yep. and I believe you're going to be talking a little bit more about that in a few minutes. I can talk forever about that. Okay, um, uh, so let's move on to uh, the second robot that we attempted to buy by Agility called yeah. Digit. Uh, I, I, you know this one? Yeah, it's a callback to the film Arrival where the uh, <laughs> aliens all had their knees going backwards. It's I guess creeps, it creeps works me out somehow. Yeah, it, I mean I it's basically it's... the way an ostrich or a, a you know certain bipedal birds walk. Right. right? But, because... Yeah, I mean, is it hydraulic there? Do we? Uh, no, they're, they're electric. They come from uh, what one of the big universities. Um, they've been doing this for a while. They had something called Cassie, which was, you know, um, they've done this like you know weird knee locomotion stuff for a decade at some school i forget which one and then it uh it was spun off as a startup it's and uh, they've so to, to give them credit they are really apparently if one is to believe the the pr they are getting adoption in in warehouses which is what they're really focused on well that's that's correct so when i try to buy one no price and you can only buy one if you buy a fleet so right. that doesn't really that kind of counts out the home consumer, which is right. the market we would like. We want to put Baker's an affordable dozen. robot in everyone's home. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, let's move on to the third robot I tried to buy. Well-known Unitree. Right. And this is the uh, I think it's the H one. Um, uh, so what happened when I tried to be? Oh, this is a great one. It allowed me at uh, price starting at sixteen thousand. It allowed mm -hmm. me to make a purchase. But it said on the purchase page, this booking order represents an intention. What the hell is that? An <laughs> Lost intention, in translation. Intention of what? <laughs> intention of what? And, it's, and to be quite honest with you, it's got no hands. Dan, what do you think of the Unitree? Look, it's an impressive piece of work. It comes from a company that did a lot of quadrupedal stuff and was basically sort of an off-brand Boston Dynamics. Um, they focus on locomotion with legs, which, you know, has some utility and makes for very good YouTube videos. But as you're seeing, even then it's, you know, what's the secret passcode to get them to actually sell you one? And this is this one is if you believe stuff you see on YouTube, you'd think this is the one that would be like, just here's my credit card. Send, send me the thing because they were selling dogs for under 10 grand. 
for a long time. These sort of spotlight, uh, you know, ripoffs. Well, so now, you know. Well, now they'll, they'll take they'll take your credit card, but they're right. they have no intent. What their intention? You're is buying you an intention. Know. You're you're buying <laughs> like we yeah. we acknowledge that maybe you exist, um, and someday in the far far future, uh, you know, your ancestors may inherit one of these robots. <laughs> is the way I would take it. Let, let's move on to the fifth one, the fourth one that I tried to buy, which is from One X Technologies. Oh, yeah. And this one's good. Um, this is the Neo, I believe. Um, right. And no price. And all it says is coming soon. So before I right. get pissed off about that, Dan, yep. what do you think about this? Well, their technology is very impressive. Um, they had a wheeled base, and then they kind of came out with a new one with a with a legged base. Um, some pretty interesting uh, manipulation tasks. I, I would suspect they've got a VLA in there uh, doing that. Right, right. And you know, clearly, I mean, w what happened when you tried to buy it? Uh, no price coming soon. Not even, not even anywhere to leave my email. Just nothing. Yeah, nothing. They, so this is this is where I, this is where I'm going to call out some bullshit. I mean, I, right. I, you know, we're yeah. at a point now where we're seeing robots all over the place. You can't buy one. I don't believe all you guys out there. I don't believe that your robots can do anything that isn't canned. I am calling you out. <laughs> this is this is bullshit. Uh, and when we and when we we release Tyco One O in two months. You're going to get a fucking robot. <laughs> you can, I'm not allowed to swear, but um, well, you are. <laughs> uh, and yes, you will get a robot in two months' time. Okay, right. so um, that's pretty much uh, the robots I wanted to show today and I wanted to rant right. about today. And I'm going to hand it over to you to talk about open source, which is what physical are doing and how we're going right. to um, move towards open source. And, and, and really what our intention is, which is getting people yeah. to use these so we can get data, et cetera, et cetera. I'll hand it right. over to you. Well, so um, as you know, Fabian, uh, we go back a long ways and we worked on a project many years ago called On2 Technologies, uh, which turned into what's now known as AV1, which is the sort of primary uh, video codec uh, in the world, really. So we have some experience in open source because uh, we open sourced that in 2003, if I recall correctly. Um, and the, the interesting thing is, so let me tell a little story. I had two arguments to make. I had made a decision as CTO that this thing needed to be open source, and I had my reasons. You want to just um, uh, quickly defi define the products because I'm not sure people know. Sure, what the, the product, product is. is video compression uh, and streaming, like what what's you know, competitive with MPEG H.264 and H.265. And in fact, it's probably running this YouTube video that we're. It, we're watching it probably now. is if it's YouTube because yeah. uh, that's Google and that's that's um. That's AV1. So there's an actually there's an open media association that's run by some of the people that we used to work with. Um, yeah, and it's it's video it's the it's the low level code that allows you to do uh, video well on on you know computers and tablets. So we were actually the first company to release uh, technology that could do full screen full frame rate video, and we leveraged it with a with a little show actually. What that music reminds me of. <laughs> Um, you know, we did some things that were kind of like YouTube and we talked to studios about doing stuff like Netflix and everybody was like, this is crazy. Computers can only do quarter screen, eight frame a second, jumpy, out of sync video. And we're like, no, we, we can do much better than that. Anyway, enough bragging. The reason I bring them up is to talk about the strategy of open source because people have asked questions. They've asked me, they've asked other experts, you know, why did um, Meta, for instance, put Llama out as open source? Why did Elon put Grok out as open source, right? Why did uh, DeepSeek, right? Why did they open source it? And so let me just quickly tell the story of why we open sourced our software back in, in the day, in the early aughts. And I had two arguments. I had an argument for my engineer friends who had built the product. And I had an argument for my CEO, who was a very hard charging friend of Steve Ballmer, wore a Breitling. Uh, and he's, he's another story. Uh, great guy, in case he's watching. Mm -hmm. Um, but so what I said to my cohorts were, you know, the bits want to be free, you know, freedom is liberty. And, you know, like Richard Stallman always said, you know, you can't really own information and we don't want like the top companies, you know, the record studios and the movie studios, you know, monopolizing the technology that we use to distribute our media. You know, it's important that we take a stand. And so we put out an open source codec. Um, the way I described it to, um, our CEO was, if you have a product that is uh, works at a level of 10 and your competitors have a product that works at a level of eight, you owe it to, to you know, the art of war says that you should destroy their ability to make any money or make any traction with anything less than a 10. So you're basically scorching the earth. You're finding your enemy. You're putting your hand in his chest, pulling his heart out and letting him watch it as he dies. This was sort of CEO speak. 
And uh, he was like, great, let's do it. And my, my the guys that I had done the uh, did he ask you any questions? Did, did he ask you any questions about how you make money if you're open sourcing and someone? Well, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. But because the, the point is, what we did was uh, let me. Uh, that's a really good point. We open sourced something called VP3 because we were developing VP4, and VP4 was 20% better than VP3, uh, and VP5, and we did VP6, and this was licensed to Skype, to uh, as I recall, Adobe, to AOL. I mean, a lot of people adopted our technology. And one of the reasons they could was their their bits and bytes people took like understood my argument right. They were able to download a codec and see how it worked, and then they could go let's just let's just upgrade to VP4. How much different can it be? It can only be better. And um, the uh, CEOs in these other companies that were making codecs though were uh, were you know sad because we <laughs> ripped their heart out and let them watch it as they died. <laughs> So okay. uh, years later, it's 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 a stand it's a de facto standard in the, the worldwide. So I think the strategy worked. And so getting back to Meta, and um, you can tell me if I'm getting in the weeds too much. This is sort of my no, stock and no. trade. This is this so is great stuff. Getting back to Meta and and Tesla and and DeepSeek, um, I think what's going on there is very much the scorched earth point of view, right? I, and I think you know if Jan LeCun will come out and give you the uh, the bits want to be free version. But Zuckerberg hmm. is definitely the rip their heart out and watch them while they die uh, person. And both arguments make sense. Llama came out and was made open source because open AI was already out there. Um, Anthropic was already out there, right? Perplexity was already out there. So they were too late to the game to be number one on a straight up, you know, we're charging for stuff, they're charging for stuff. So they did the open source to make it more appealing. And yeah, go ahead. I was going to ask you, uh, what I wanted to ask you was, was was how open source is going to relate to what we're doing now. Yeah, okay. So, so, so at that point, we did a, so you mean we did a video. Get back, stop ranting, yeah, get did, back on subject. Well, well, yeah, just a, it's a different product. So last time it was yeah. a software codec. It was a, it was, it was a core technology. So, uh, this time it's, it's, it's uh, something very different. Well, there's a couple interesting things here. So um, probably people who are watching this maybe know about Hugging Face, which is basically an open source res, sort of GitHub for models. So there's, there's more than just the software code now, right? Like when we did Codex, it was just, you know, a bunch of C++ code that, that did something interesting. And, and that was that. Nowadays, you have the model, you have the data, you have the architecture of the transformer, the, you have the, the, um, the recipe of curating the data, you have the uh, recipes that are used to actually do the, the training. Uh, the curation, the fine tuning. So there's a whole, there's a stack of technologies and a stack of data, right? Because you have the code, the code then runs on GPUs to distill the data, then produces a model, and the model is is instantiated by an inference engine. And, and, so, and the data, uh, and we hope to get data. I, th I think. We yes. Okay. So this. so so the big companies can just, you know, they're raising billions and trillions of dollars soon, and they can hire, you know. A thousand people in some, you know, somewhat uh, depressed country, you know, with with some English speaking people to like do the the our our what is it, the reinforcement with human feedback or RH whatever uh, RLHF, right? So 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 there's a difference in that the models are really the, the closer thing to what you actually care about are the models because the inference code is almost everybody puts the inference code out there. And it's based on you know PyTorch and transformers, and that's that's easy to, that that's available to everybody. Um, what's interesting are the models, right? So like, the reason we want to do open source is we don't have billions of dollars of capital, but we want to create a community of people that are using a standard platform uh, that's affordable, that has the degrees of freedom that we can train on with the proper. VLA, Vision Language Action Models, right? Like the one that Physical Intelligence just put out in open source, they call Pi Zero. And it's it's the same sort of technology that Figure is using uh, in a closed source way, and I would assume uh, Tesla as well. So, uh, so we're leveraging, just as in open source days back 20 years ago, you were basically sharing the, the job of working on the code these days, we would share the job, not of the code, but of training the, the models. Data. Of, and, of doing and the training and, and Developing data. the data necessary. When maybe also uh, cloud sourcing, uh, crowd, crowdsourcing the uh, the actual uh, training process, right? Because if we have hundreds or thousands of, of users, we can create a cloud-based training regimen where everybody puts their one GPU in their laptop, in you know, their gaming machine, up on the net, and we 
we you know there's issues of privacy and cybersecurity and stuff like that but um yeah. there's some people already looking at that so i don't wow. know that's a wow. pretty long rant well well um one thing i will say is in, in terms of us collecting data um I don't want this to be an infomercial, such so as why I'm mentioning it at the end, but I just want to remind everybody um, that our robot, which we, we will be selling for $2,500 in two months, there will only be 100 of. We will give one of them away for free to a subscriber, so please smash that subscribe button. <laughs> yeah, and, and, <laughs> and, and uh, it, it would be great if, if people want to jump on the comments as well. Because that would love also to get be, some yep. feedback. Um, I know that it's going to be difficult. What we're talking about. If if people haven't seen it yet, they're not quite sure. Yeah, you know, yeah. we, but, but, well, but, I'm we, saying we, next week. We, yeah, when, when we when we when we show. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in once again. Um, we hope to see you next week, and we hope to show you something interesting next week. Thank you. Bye. Oh my.